family sits in that area there. Again, if you want to stay where you're seated, that's fine as well. We will not process in. But we do have to have all of you to be in a seat. We cannot stand around the walls. Thank you so much.
God bless you as we prepare ourselves for the homeborn celebration of this Harvey. Order service has already been planned and will go as the order has been planned. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and eternal God, as we come at this hour, we pray now for this family that you would give them supernatural strength that they even surpass all understanding. Let them know that earth has no sorrows that your heaven cannot heal. Direct them and guide them in the days, the weeks, the months, and the years to come. Let them stand close together as they go through this trouble, traumatic, and trying times. Your word says that we can cast our cares upon you because you care for us. Lead us and guide us in this hard time. It's in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus we pray. And the people of God shout amen. amen. At this time, it's going to be a scripture reading. Sister Hudson is going to come. from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob's love. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up your everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and ever lifted him up your everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hope. He is the king of glory. May the Lord have a blessed reading and hearing and obeying of his holy word. Amen. As we prepare ourselves for the solo, I won't complain. Is it Greer? Is Greer present? Listen, as she comes to sing, she's going to go to my right, which is her left. We're not here because Miss Harvey died. We're here because she lived. And we just can celebrate, give God a hand clap of praise for the years that he gave her. So come on, bless her up you really Amen. First, giving out to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our soon coming King to this great family, we say, Surely He is the King, the King of glory. He will lift up your bow down heads. Give honor to my pastor, the Honorable Bishop Lee Scott, to the Lodge Stone Church family, and all of those who are in attendance to celebrate with them this wonderful life. Yeah. I've had some good days. I've had some heels to climb. I've had some weary
the child of God can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Father, why so much pain? But I had to learn.
For all of you guys that didn't know my big sister, she was one of a kind. I mean, she was straight one of a kind. Right now, my daddy is saying, girl, what you doing? And my sister Carl, I'll be pitching on all. You know, and then my sister Cece, she probably just looked at her and just laughed and just said, hey, sister. You know, this is my chichi baby. So whenever I would say her name like that, she would always say something I can't say to y'all. <laughs> but my family, I love you guys. God bless. I wanted to say to honor to God first and honor to any pastor that's here today and honor to my pastor at the Sense of Republic Church, Pastor Tori Anthony. And this is, I'd like to ask all the store residents that's here to stand, please. We honor to the Hudson family, the Harvey family, her children. We honor to you all. I was once in your place, sitting here, just where you're sitting at now. I know the pain that you're going to, but Psalms 27, verse 14 says, he will strengthen your heart. Just wait on him and trust in him. It's nothing like knowing the Lord. If you don't know him, get to know him, because he can be your best friend. He can honor you. The day this happened, one of your family members says, we have to tell each other that we love them more. And he was so right. You were so right, young man, because it ain't nothing like family and trusted in the Lord with your family. You know, we can raise our kids, we can pray for our kids, but you know our kids have their own minds. And all we can do is lift them up in our prayers and be our mothers and be our fathers. So I'm asking you to just keep on, keep on praying and praying. I had my foot cut off and I had 10 surgeries on my foot. And each time I went under, I had him with me and I prayed every time. Oh no, I can't walk like I want to walk. I can't run like I want to run. But I can walk. And I got him every time I walk. So I keep him with me. So if you don't know him, get to know him. I love you all. Thank you.
Slim, <laughs> came into this world on October 25th, 1958. Being the middle child was tough, but she always made sure she stood out. She was the prankster of the family. We know where I get that from. Uh, and just knew how to get under her sibling's skin. She was fun and funny, the family clown, and made everyone laugh no matter how mad they were at her. Once she scared my aunt so bad, she hid in the stairs, and my aunt came down, she jumped out on her, and she slapped her in the face, and they both laughed. <laughs> She was always paired with Auntie Mush to go places because they were close in age. Uh, one day, Auntie Mush tells me they were to go to the dentist, to a Dr. Gregory at Yateman Clinic. But instead of going to the clinic, I hope you already know this, Granny. Um, you do. Uh, they decided to stop at the corner store and spend their bus fare to get cheese popcorn. So of course, the dentist realized they got popcorn in their teeth <laughs> and told my granny. Auntie Mush said she cried. And of course, in true fashion, my mom laughed. <laughs> Even as a teen, she was cunning, always telling granny she was the only one without homework. She never came home with books. She said she never had any. <laughs> Of course, that worked until that report card came with a stutter of deeds. <laughs> she slid by the skin of her teeth into graduation from Labor Catholic High School in 1976. Uh, she then married Warren Harvey and birthed her first child in 1979, followed by after, and she enlisted in the army, because all, as we all know, <laughs> that lady got listen. <laughs> Uh, after her stint in the Army, she moved to Tacoma, and in the late 90s, came back here to St. Louis to raise her two girls alongside of her family. My mom had such a love for music, she would always break into dance, even though she couldn't, no matter where she was, and in her own words, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> She was always the life of the party and lit, the, lit up every room she entered. She was also the only person who would set up a birthday dinner for herself and not show up. We have all gotten the infamous 4 a.m. call from her to check in and thought to ourselves, what are you doing up and why are you calling me? But as A.T. Risa tells it, that was her way of making sure we knew she was thinking about us. Anytime you asked her on that 4 a.m. call, how are you doing? She would always reply, blessed to be alive. Mother of two, grandmother to five, Jose, Charles, Cameron, Javon, Oshani. Sister to Larry, Linda, Teresa, Pam, Carol, Marianne, Cecilia, Kim, Simon, Roy, and Ann, and aunt to many. There's too many of y'all in the name. <laughs> she always said a hard head makes a soft insert word. <laughs> uh, we'll just go with butt. Well, she must have had the softest butt in the nation, because Lord knows that lady was hard headed and didn't listen. <laughs> Although we will miss those 4 a.m. phone calls, you can rest now, Mama. Now you can watch over us with Granddad, Auntie Sita, Auntie Carol, and Amy. She will be missed by all, but her memory will live on in us forever. No diggity, no doubt. <laughs>
again, God bless you. It's certainly our prayer. And just to be a few more minutes, so what we're going to do, we're going to allow the unit to stay open. Uh, you all can fellowship, family and friends, and well wishes can fellowship, and then we'll dismiss. God bless you.